Then I want to show you one more thing. So next slide. And this is especially for the young people in the audience. So here are two masterpieces of something about the relationship between science and poetry and in still another way. Uh, two masterpieces, one of chemistry, Mendeleev's periodic table of the elements. The other, uh, uh, William Blake's poem, The Tiger, familiar to everyone. Um, I probably don't need to say what, uh, what I was going to say. That is because many people here have tried writing poems. But one of the things uh, is that uh, when you see masterpieces, especially young people, uh, don't feel that, how can I possibly do that? So it, it pays to destroy that notion uh, of masterpieces uh, and talent and everything else. Um, and uh, by showing you uh, how, how these things were actually written, the draft of these things. Um, so let me show you uh, this uh, next slide, is the one of the periodic table. <laughs> this is the first uh, extant draft we have. You know, when you're asked to do something, uh, to order the elements, to see some order in them, and the uh, relative w masses, weights of the elements were just beginning to be known seven years before 1867 when Mendeleev did this. Um, so he, the first thing you do, like anything, maybe stalling for time, a good tactic in an oral examination or anywhere, uh, is to make a list of the things, to avoid doing the work first of classifying them. Uh, so he makes a list of the elements in the order of the increasing atomic number, and as he, as he fits them into the table, he crosses them off. He's writing in a mixture of German. He studied in Germany and Russian. And these were three elements either, uh, that were left over, uh, and uh, he's a theoretician. They don't fit at first. He will make them fit. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the nature. And this is the periodic table. You have to turn it by 90 degrees to see the relationship. But here is fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. The symbols were just 30 years before agreed on, not really completely agreed on, but he uses the modern symbols. Um, the other thing is a whole row is missing, a whole column of the uh, noble gases they had weren't discovered for another 25 years. But what's the most beautiful thing about this? The crossing out, of course. <laughs> It's the ultimate testimony to the humanity of this object. This is a human being struggling to understand this world. And uh, that is no different from the doodlings that we do. Uh, there is a reason, a purposiveness in that, which is interesting, and we will do that sometimes. There's a lot of interesting things here. As for Blake, uh, there, well, here is the last draft that we have, next one of the tiger. Uh, dread, their grasp could frame is what eventually winds up, but he has their grasp. He liked that their grasp, two strong words. So he tries it out next here, doesn't go there. Eventually it finds its way slightly modified in there. So this is again that salvage principle at work. Uh, in the, but it's wonderful. Look at all the stuff. This thing is the printer's mark. Someone, uh, the, the, when the page is printed, you cross out the whole page. Um, amazing that someone could print from that. But uh, this is uh, next slide. There are similarities. There are differences between art and science. Uh, don't want to push the two into each other. But I think it is vivifying in Whitman's sense of the word to see these two side by side like this. Um, both fruits of human creation. Thank you very much.